Okay, we are going to look at the discriminant just a little bit more today. Okay, and then our explanation is going to be to understand really what we're doing, how to do the assignment is actually fairly easy. You're actually just going to simplify the discriminant in the radical, which you already should know how to do, but we may have forgotten. Now, this is the equation of a parabola in standard form, and you all have that written down there. When y is zero, okay guys, when y is zero, I can solve that equation. Now, I'm not showing you how they came up with this equation down here, but a, b, and c are just numbers. So when you know what a, b, and c are, you can plug it in and you can get what x is when y is zero. Those are x intercepts. And I'll do an example here in a second. Okay, all quadratic equations can be solved. Every single one. You can find the x-intercepts if they exist. They may not exist. We'll talk about that later. This little two here tells you the maximum number of x-intercepts. Okay, so let's see if we can understand what's happening now. Manipulating this to get this is not easy, it's hard. Yeah. Turn it over. Oh, you must have my mask. I can do this one instead. Yeah. Okay. So, going to the next slide. What does the graph of that look like? What? Can I see the graph? Looks like a parabola. Did I run out? Oh no, this is it. This is part of it. You can do the work But I don't know where the fun is. I might, I'm not. I guess. Okay, but you guys can do it. So it's a parabola. How does it draw a parabola? Paint it. That's what it looks like. It could be upside down too, by the way. Now, what are we trying to find here? When we set this equal to zero, equals ax squared plus bx plus c, and then we can use the thing, which you need to know in the final exam, but it also helps you hopefully to understand it. When we are doing that, we are looking for these points right there. Okay, girls? We're looking for right here. Now, in this case, there are two. What if I drag this up? Now there's only, India, one. And if I drag it up further, there aren't any. It doesn't have to be any. It may not cross it. But that's what we're looking for. We're looking for these points. What is true about the y coordinate for any point on the x axis? Y is zero. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna see. <laughs> we're gonna do a, a problem. We're gonna do this problem. We've done this before. Remember we graphed these? We found the x intercepts. And we use zero product property. Or right on the on your iPad. Okay. Okay. Do you remember how to find the x intercept? We had to factor it. Remember the x game? Yes, you do. Okay. So what goes here? Okay. Okay. Negative two. Negative three. Okay, do you remember what you're going to put in this, this spot? I want numbers that multiply to get three. Okay, so I'm going to put a one and a three. And k says it's negative because when you add these two numbers, you get a negative two. So when you factor this, you get y equals x plus one, x minus three. Well, if I want to graph that, I want to put the x intercept and told me that y is zero. So y is zero. Now, do you remember the zero product property? If I multiply two numbers, and these, in the parentheses, are numbers. X plus one is a number. If x is 10, then that's 11. If x is one, then that's two. This is numbers. Well, I want the product to be zero. What has to be true about x plus one? 
if I want the answer to be zero, one has to be two. One of these has to be zero. Because zero times any number is zero. I think you're trying to get to this point. What will make that zero? Negative one. Or x minus three equals zero, so x is equal to what? This is review. I want you to connect here. Just give me one second. So I have this, and I have three, and you remember how to find the axis of symmetry. This is going to be on your final exam, so we have to remember how to do it. And yeah. That's the name of the ordered pair. I want to find the axis of symmetry, which is halfway in between. Remember what we did to find it? Now, if we add 3 plus the negative 1, they're going to fix this. We're going to add that, divide by 2. What does that give you? 3 minus 1 is 2. Over 2. Okay? India? X equals 1. No, it's not a great picture, but it's cool. So, I could... Guys, I could find the vertex, but this is good enough. I just want to see the picture there. Okay? But what happens? This I can factor. But what if I can't factor? What if I can't factor it? What if it's x squared plus x plus 1 is in 0? Guess what? I can't factor that. So, there's a way to find out what the x and the set are for those things that don't factor, and it's called the quadratic formula. And it's this. And tomorrow we'll actually do it. The opposite of b, which is the number of x, plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2x. So tomorrow we're going to put it all together. Today, we're only going to worry about the square root. We're just going to add one piece here. We're going to actually square root that number. We call the discriminant. Question? Shall we? We're doing this. But now you missed it. Because the thought, reason why I want to go through this is, is so what we're doing. Otherwise, it's just blindly looking at the quadratic formula. I know you can do the, the manipulation. That's not it. You don't understand what we're trying to do. We are trying to find these points right here. If I could factor, that's wonderful. But most things cannot be factored. So there's got to be another way to solve an equation where it's equal to zero. There's one of them. By the way, this one never crosses it. Let's look at the discriminant here. Remember the discriminant? The discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. So j, what's a? It's ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, Sayla? Okay, which phone's with me? What? What is, what is A? One. Remind me the question? Oh, you're going to miss the last second. Okay. Okay, what's B? India. What's B? It's a number in front of X. How many X's do you see? There it is, one. What's C? Sayla? What's C? There's no four up there. Good. Okay, let's find the discriminant. And it's b squared, which is 1 squared, which is 1, minus 4, times a, beginning up front was times c. Yes, yeah. or it's or both. One with it. Okay, so what is this going to give me? I'm trying to get a coherent lesson. What's 1 minus 4, Joey? Okay, if the discriminant is negative, can you square root that? Can you square root it? No. So there's no solution. So I know that this, I know this particular parabola. It doesn't cross the bx axis. Okay, so let's do some problems. <coughs> let's review with the discriminant. This is b squared minus 4ac. But so the next slide might be a little small in your handout. Just get the discriminant positive on the solution. Then the square root. 
any heartbeat. If that's a positive number, I'm okay. Because it's one, I'm going to find out that's not. And a minus there. Okay, so there's two. What if it's a zero? Remember? No? If, it's, if this is zero, what's the square root of zero? Zero. This is minus zero today. So there's one. Yes. Okay, what if it's negative? How many things is that up? Same. Okay. Let's write that away. If the discriminant's negative, how many solutions are there? Jane, do you remember? There aren't any. Because you can't square root a negative number. If you know why, you remember. Otherwise, you won't remember. So all we're going to do today is find the discriminant like we did yesterday, and then we're going to simplify the square root. That's it. So there are, the, there are three problems we're going to do. So we're going to find the discriminant, tell me how many solutions there are, and we're going to see how the radical of that pop. Do I have that one? You do have this. So this is AX squared plus BX plus C. What is A, Joey? What's C? It's 3. And C is 7. So I'm going to, I, I like to write, you know, I'm going to write. Go ahead and do the other half. Right out of the bat. What's B squared? <coughs> Jane? Jane. No, Jane. What's B squared? B is 3. So this is what? 9. You should be doing the problems. It doesn't matter. Okay. 4, A, C. What's A? Maddie? What's A? What's, what's A? Two. What's C? Seven. Seven. Now, if we're just on a calculator, you don't want to do that yet. Just calculate this. Okay. Taylor, what does that come up and give us? Four times two is? Eight. Times. This is what kind of a number? Positive, zero, or negative? It's negative. How many solutions are there? No solutions. Why? Okay, if you remember, just think, because this is going to be under the radical. This is negative 47. And you square root of negative 47. No. Okay. Let's try that one. And we don't know how to factor that. We haven't really practiced that. So this is A, there's B, and there's C. So what's A? Samantha? Samantha, what's A? Three. B is? Excellent. Negative two. C is? Negative five. Okay. So I got B squared minus 4AC. What's B squared, Jane? What's B squared? What if we square any number? It's always positive. What's negative 2 times negative 2? It's 4. Don't show the substitution. Because what happens when you put it in is you do that. And that's wrong. You put it in, you have to do this. But you guys don't like to put the parentheses in. You make a choice not to put them in. You can't do it. So, yeah, just a square. And you have to be done with the problem. Four, what's A? Three. And then C is? No. Negative five. Is that okay here? Okay, we've got to do this now. It's four. What's the sign going to be? Positive or negative? A negative times a negative is positive. What's four times two times five? 12 times 5, does anybody know what that is? That's 60. So that's 64. How many solutions are there? 2. And now we have to square root my 64, which is 
Yes, that's, that's what's new today. And there's not, it's not new. Okay, one more and then we'll do the problems off the off the homework. Huh? Okay, what's A, what's B, what's C? Okay, what's A? B is? Okay, and C is? Let's find the discriminant. It's B squared minus 4AC. B squared is what? What's negative 2 squared? J? Put that down, please. 4 minus 4 times A times C. What's A? 1. What's C? 1. So this is what? 4 minus 4, which is 0. How many solutions? No. 1. Because the B squared minus 4, guys, B squared minus 4 is equal to 0 if you keep one solution. Tomorrow, when I put it all together, you'll see why there's only one. Okay. Let's do the first problem on the word sweet. I'll get it for you. Yeah. What's A? <laughs> Number one, we're gonna, we are going to do one because we're not going to do everything that's there. And I don't want you to get confused. Okay. Yes. A is one. And C is... Okay, so we've substituted in. guys so it's b squared minus 4ac so what's b squared now okay jesse i need to focus here minus 4 times a times c jesse what's a here what's a one and what's c negative 18 so it's going to be 9. A is the number in front of x squared. How many x squared do you see? You see 1. Okay, Jack? What's this give us? 9. What's the sign going to be? 2 negatives make A positive. What's 18 times 4? No? 2. 4 times 1 is 4. 70 what? No. 72. If I add that up, I get what? Okay. What's the square root of 81? This is what's the difference today. That we want you to go one step further and find the square root in exact form. We'll do decimals later. So let's do number 2. And then you have some time to work, and I'll be collecting yesterday's assignment. So if you haven't corrected it or finished it, you need to get that done. I'll give it back and go to the right thing. <laughs> now this one's of course a little harder. So what's A? Or B is negative two. C is. Negative 15. Is that okay, Chris? We got that. This is A. This is B. This is C. Okay. Wait, well, well, let's get this one done. So it's B squared minus 4 AC. There's work to do on this one. Okay, what's B squared? 4. Put the 4 away, please. Minus 4 times A, which is 4. And C is negative 15. Now I'm going to need a calculator. So this is going to be 4 plus, 
What's four times four? Sixteen times fifteen. No, I took care of the negatives. That's the reason why I did that. Okay, Joey, do you have a calculator? Probably not. Ah. This is 240? Yeah, I think it's right. And so you get 244. Now, here's what you have to do. You have to simplify the square root of 244. Do you remember how you did that? Because 16 times 50 is 245. Remember? Okay, so we have 244. J says divide by 2. What do I get? Okay, can I do 2 again? Two goes into two, how many times? Two divides into two, how many times? Yeah. Two goes into twelve, six times, got that. What's two into two? One. Now, 61 has to be prime. Okay, so we have a match. So what does the simplify to give you? Two times the square root of 61. That's what's different today. The day you have to square root it, that's the answer. Today you have to square root it. Tomorrow, we're going to put it all together with the quadratic formula and simplify. So it's, it's going to be harder. Oh, now somebody asked me for 10. I think I know which one that is. Yes, we yes, asked the same question in my other class. It's easy. Now I have to do this too so that we don't have the answer, so I'll do it next time. Nope, it's not zero. Nope, it's negative 12. Remember, are ready? Two times the square is 61. That's what you have to do. You're going to get this telling you that there's two solutions, but I want you to simplify a radical. We're just, we're stepping to it slowly and setting in a whole quarter of one. Okay, ready? Okay, yeah. And in the ask for number 10, and we asked in the other class as well, because it's AX squared plus BX plus C. So this is X squared. How many X's do you see? No, I don't see any X's. Not X squared. There's there's one x squared, you're right. There's one of those, but how many plain old x's are there? There aren't any. Plus zero x, and c is the constant. So what's a? One, b is zero, and c is negative 12. So it's b squared minus 4ac. If you write that down every time, you're going to know this. And you have to know it on the, on the ACT. <laughs> They're not going to give it to you. They're not going to give it to you on the ACC. You have to know what I'm It's one of the most powerful formulas you ever use. Linear equations you can solve. Those are with just x's. Quadratics have x squared. You can always solve those. Nobody will expect you to solve x cubed. It's too hard. And beyond that, there is no process to solve anything with a higher exponent than 3. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. There is no process. These always work. If you give me x squared, I can always solve it. Yes, that's fine. Okay, what's b squared? Oh, b is 0. What's b zero squared? 0. Minus 4 times a times c. What's a? 1, and c is 12. So you multiply that out, what's 4 times 12? It's going to be positive for the negative times the negative is positive. So I'm going to be looking at the square root of 48. So what divides into 48? 2. I like 2 because it's easy. What's 2 into 48? 24. Divide by what? 2. This gives you 12. And divide by 2. And it gives you 6. Let's divide by 2. It gives me 3. And I can't divide by 2 any longer. So I get 3. And I get 1. Oh. How many twos match? One, two. So you pull both off. It's two times two. What's still left under the radical? What is two times two? It's four times the square root of three. This is 
things that we did. Remember, we reviewed radicals yesterday. Harder things than this, actually, because you're not going to add it with the other stuff that we will tomorrow. And then, that's the description. This is the description, 48. It shows me there are two solutions. You'll see why there are two tomorrow. I'm not saying I'm crazy about the way the order we're doing it in, but at least we're doing pieces, so it's just making the manipulation here easier for you. And tomorrow we're going to put them in, and then we're going to have some real fun with some fine things. And I'm not sure how much we do. I know I don't really care. Because you don't have to do it on the ACT. It's not on the MTA. Oh, yeah, you do have to do it on the ACT. But it's not on the ACT. Thank you.